to a slave castle. There's a difference between a royal castle and a slave castle. This is a slave castle. My name is Tony Wade and I'm your guy. Before we start the talk of the slave castle, I'm going to take you to a shady area and I'm going to give a very brief introduction. After that, we begin today's talk. Please come with me. Good luck on finding a shady area. It's shady for some. Yeah, feeling it already. That's that's pretty good. Yes. So they went down the same place, right? Here. Yes. This for men only. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll take it to the field. Mm -hmm. This for men. But this was a church. Right there was church. They were having service. But I want everybody to come before. Yeah, come, come up, oh, come, come up closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, please. The floor that leads to the middle dungeon is very slippery. Oh. Yeah. So you take your time. You walk slowly, please. That we all move to the left. To the left, yes. All right. Uh, can you open the side of the back and you get this light? It's gonna be dark down there. No, uh, yeah, remove the clip. There we go. Thank you. That'll work. So family, we have light. Well, not night vision, but night lights. Oh, yeah, how much you want? I'm all right. Don't worry about me. No, no. Go by the wall. Just go by the wall. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You gotta do the beauty queen walk. Yes. Allow the queen to walk. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta do this. You gotta do the so beauty queen walk this way. Like, this is the beauty queen walk. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sideways. Put that on top. Sideways. They're using your whole foot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that is better than the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Walk. Are you using the beauty queen walk, brother? Yeah, I'm using the beauty man walk. And take off the sun without our hands. Okay. Good morning. Distribution, supply and demand. We were the good family, stolen Africans, stolen from the motherland, and brought to the Americas. And here we are, family returning. Uh, my one of the families, please, let's step over, let's come this way. Okay. My wonderful families, I officially welcome you all to Cape Coast Lake Castle. My name again is Wadi Tony, and I'm your guide. It is very important for every one of us to know where we are right now. This place is the Male Slave Dungeon. The Male Slave Dungeon was established 
to hold as many as 1,000 African bears. There are five chimps in the middle dungeon. We are in the first chamber. There are four chambers where we just came from. In each one of the chambers, we as many as 200 enslaved African men. Now, for 200 men here, the only source of light in the air for them were the three veins up there. The mosquitoes came in here, there were cockroaches all over. There was a wide spread of diseases like malaria, diarrhea, cholera. Many slave Africans had rashes on their bodies because the conditions were very poor and very starving. What is truly shocking is that on top of this meal dungeon, the English architects also built a church. The name of the church is Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. That is what we all do not understand. Why the English colonizers built a church on top of the meal dungeon. Now before we start the talk, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction. There are three slave castles in the whole of West Africa. It is so unfortunate that the three slave castles are located in Ghana. These three slave castles are El Mina Slave Castle, Osu Slave Castle, and Kipu Slave Castle. El Mina Slave Castle was established by the Portuguese in 1482. That one is the oldest and the largest slave castle in the whole of West Africa. And to many historians, El Mina Slave Castle is the oldest European structure in all of West Africa. Osu Slave Castle is located in Accra. The Danish built that one in 1661 or 1662. And this one is Cape Coast Slave Castle, erected by the English in the year 1665. Date wise, Cape Coast Slave Castle is the youngest. However, this slave castle is 356 years old by one of our families. Long before the Europeans came to build the slave castles in West Africa, the first intruders to come here were the Arabs. The Arabs initiated a trade we call the Trans Sahara trade. They came here, they stole a lot of gold, ivory, and made merchandise. They also took some Africans to the Middle East. However, the Arabs castrated all the African men. That is why today, it is very difficult for us to tell the origins of the black Arabs. Around a period of time, the Arabs were trading with the Europeans. You know, the gold that they stole from the, from the Africans, they were using the same gold to trade with the Europeans. But it got to a certain level where the Europeans got their angels, and their plan was to avoid the Arabs and to start directly dealing with the Africans. The first Europeans to come here were the Portuguese. The Portuguese got to Elmina and built El Mina Slave Castle in 1482. El Mina Slave Castle was not built for the transatlantic slave trade. That is why when you go there, you realize that the dungeons there are different than the dungeons here. That stands to reason that the British knew what they were doing. They intentionally built this to exploit Africans, to kill Africans, and to initiate many forms of massacre. By one of the families. When the Portuguese got to Albania, for about 90 years, they did not transport Africans to the Americas. However, they took some Africans to Europe until 1492, when this man we call Christopher Columbus claimed he discovered the Americas. Now, when that part of the world was discovered, the Europeans realized that they could call to the sugar cane in that part of the world to produce sugar because sugar was very expensive. So, Europeans named sugar white gold. So they were using the Native Americans there as cheap laborers. But because the Europeans introduced many diseases, very rare diseases, into the Americans, the Native Americans were dying. There was one priest, a priest we call Bartolomeo de las Casas. He was trying to Christianize the Native Americans. By the same process, he later realized that the Native Americans were dying. So he started protecting them against the Europeans. But this man did something that changed Africa for so many centuries. He introduced the Africans to the Europeans, that the Africans are very strong people. So Europeans should come for Africans rather than using 
the Native Americans as chief leaders. And that was the genesis of the transatlantic slave trade. My wonderful families, there are many books that claim that Africans did sell their own people. I personally do not like using the word sell, trade, buy, or sold. There was no trade. There was massacre, exploitation, manipulation, and genocide. And as a matter of fact, I do call what happened here transatlantic slave manipulation, transatlantic slave genocide, transatlantic slave massacre, exploitation, and many more. Now, long before the Europeans came to Africa, our ancestors in Africa did not have the kind of geopolitical systems that we have. They didn't have Ghana, Mali, Burkina Faso, the Arabs. They had what you call African empires, kingdoms, kingdoms, states. Now these different jurisdictions in Africa were not speaking the same languages. Neither were they using the same constitution in governing their different states. Because of that, there was no common unity. And long before the Europeans came, our ancestors were practicing what you call domestic servitude. There's a difference between servitude and slavery. This is what they were doing. They were all fighting against one another. One of the reasons why they were fighting against one another was because they were all trying to expand their geographical authorities. And eventually, after a very long period of fight, there were many states that were conquered by those that were powerful. The moment a state is being conquered, the members in that state that were conquered became servants of those that conquered them. Not slaves, but servants. The reason why we call them servants and not slaves was because their names were not changed. They could marry. Their descendants were not enslaved people. But when Europeans came, they capitalized on that system and supplied into Africa two powerful tools gun and gunpowder. That is what provoked the travel wars in Africa. Everybody was fighting. And this lasted for 400 years. Many of the enslaved African people who were brought here were not only from Ghana. Many were from Mali, Burkina Faso, the Ivory Coast. They had to walk for many weeks before they got here. Mm. Here the castle had two dungeons, the male dungeon and the female dungeon. It was in the dungeons that our ancestors were being held for three months before they had to be shipped off to the Americas. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very brief introduction. I'm going to pause here. Any questions before we start to talk, please? Okay, please come this way. We have a, we, we have a few things. Watch out and move again. Yeah. Please make sure you move on the ground. Okay, that's okay. Please. Okay. Now, I may mention the fact that the male dungeon comprises of five chambers or cells. We had the first chamber, and there are four chambers right there. In each one of them were 200 African men. This is where the African men defecated. This is where they slept. This is where they went. The conditions here were very stark. There was a wide spread of diseases, malaria, diarrhea, cholera. There were many instances where the African men in the male dungeon cried out loud, looking for help. But nobody could help them. There was no one around to help them. They were being trapped here. Many of them were forced to call the names of their great grandfathers mm -hmm. and great grandmothers. Now, uh, here in the male dungeon lies a very big hole up there. In every chamber, it's a big hole like that. That hole is called the map of the walls of the castle. Now, the English colonizers outside the dungeon were not secure. They were very paranoid because they were very afraid that the African men in the male dungeon might break the doors and fight back. Or rebel. So they intentionally crafted posts like that. Anytime the African men in the male dungeon tried to break the, the, the doors, you know, the noise would just channel through that whole act. Because of that hole, the English colonizers in the male, the English colonizers out there knew whatever that was going on in the male dungeon. 
by one of our families. When you go to Bell in a castle, there's a church there. The Portuguese built a church closer to the new dungeon. Also, Slave Castle in Accra lies a church. Why did the Europeans build churches in the Slave Castle? That is another picture of discussion. Europeans did not come to Africa only to exploit Africans. They came here to Christianize them. Yeah. Now, and that was not easy. So they intentionally built the churches in the castles in order to advertise Christianity to them. Because once you are being transported as an enslaved African man or woman out there, you'll be forced to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Mm -hmm. So these were all white beings. They were preparing them here before they had to transport them. Um, Let's look carefully on what you are standing. But there are a few things you need to see. Now, there are many bricks in the tombs, in the first table. You see many bricks here. Please come a bit closer. For those closer to me, you are to those behind me, please let me come closer. Let me show you this. Now, when you look carefully, you'll realize that I am the only one who is not standing with bricks. You see, I'm standing on a square-like ship, and it is dark. You see bricks all over. The original floor of the entire male slave dungeon are bricks. Now, we were all supposed to be observing bricks where I'm standing by now. But something happened here. Something very clear happened. I'm not going to explain it. Here, let's move to the fourth chamber. Let me explain to you why there are two different ways in the first chamber. Uh, before we do that, I would like to know if you have any questions for me. And please be very mindful of what your steps. Know very well where you are standing and see. Yes, please. Is anyone buried? Yes. Buried. They were not buried immediately. This is where they were in here. But if they either dumped them somewhere or they dumped them in the ocean. What are these? This is a trench. It's a trench where they are, they are visas in Europe. Yeah. That would just go through to the ocean. But when you, when you go out, you are, you are going to see it very well. Is it all No, there are five of them. But we are the first one. Listen. So, watch um, on the way to the fourth chamber. Chamber number yes, two is here. Slowly, please. And then four. Yeah. I don't move if you need. Slowly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, can you tell me what's going on and look in my bag, with the handles in my bag? Why is this one in Okay, let's go. Slowly. Just be careful. In the middle. You don't, you don't. It's a little bit of sleep. You take a time. Please. So was it, I mean, I understand, was it the British that initiated the transatlantic slavery? Or no, I'll, I'll blame the, the, the Portuguese. Yeah, I'll put it, the blame on the Portuguese. They, they initiated that because they were the first to come here. Mm -hmm. In the process, the, the British joined them. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Arabs were the first intruders to come. The Arabs mm -hmm. of the Middle East were the first to come here. Uh, what's your point? So, after that, um, because of the gold, mm -hmm. the Europeans also came here. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And the first Europeans to come were the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Portuguese were the first Europeans to transport Africans directly from Africa to Europe. But from Europe to the New World or to the Americas, where they Spanish. 
they took the, they took the first Africans to Haiti mm -hmm. in 1502 or 1503. Mm -hmm. We've already suffered. So, so these are the chambers. We've already been to the first chamber. We went to the second chamber, and this is the third chamber. That's the fourth chamber. Remember, back in the first chamber, we did, we did see a lot of bricks. We can see bricks in the second chamber, the third chamber, the fourth chamber, and the last chamber. And I may mention the fact that the original floor of the entire name of the slave dungeon are the bricks we saw in the first chamber. We were supposed to be standing on the bricks right now. We were supposed to be seeing bricks all over. Something happened here. Slavery lasted for about 250 years here. Now, it is imperative for every one of us to note that it was in this dungeon that our sisters dedicated. This is where he ate. This is where he slept. This is where many of them died. Hundreds of thousands of the Africans died here. Now, because of that, there was a decomposition of feces. Urine, blood, sweat, food remains, which eventually covered the bricks. And that is what you see right now. Now, in 1974, there was a group of archaeologists who came here and they went to the first chamber, excavated the floor of the first chamber, and took this sample to a crowd for further examination. That is when the archaeologists found out that this darkened floor contains traces of DNA of human beings. Mm -hmm. And after the excavation, you know, back in the first chamber, I was the only one who was standing on the darkened floor like this. Mm -hmm. That one was left as an evidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just let me hear a part as well. I said, in the first chamber, yeah. you know, I said, you should, you should look at it. I made mention of the bricks. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the same process, I, I said this, the, 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 there was a very small yeah. floor that looked just like that. Right. And that one, you know, was left as an evidence. After the archaeologists went in the first chamber and excavated the floor of the first chamber. Mm -hmm. yeah. After that, we went. But I'm going to show you something, please. Now, please watch uh, Take your time, walk slowly, please. Ancestors here, defecated here. Now, this is where they slept. They ate here. They had decomposition of feces, jewelry, blood. Eventually, covered the bricks. And this is it. This this contains DNA. Mm -hmm. Not all the Africans out there knew the conditions that 
some of the Africans had to endure in the middle of Nigeria. You see, when we come in, so the main, the, the, the main entrance, the main entrance is the only entrance. And once that door out there is closed, and you are standing on the court here, you already know there are 1,000 men here. You already know that. There is no other exit or any other doors. The exit is right there. And the exit is connected to the door we call the door of no return. So, and then in that exit is 66 meters. How many changes? So, how, how many, of course, there are many Africans who knew what was going on here. They knew what was going on here. And the truth of the matter is that there are bad people everywhere. Even in America, there are bad people. There are black people who don't want black unity. There are some black people like that. It's the same thing here. The white people who came here were very crafty people. Mm. You know, they were able to identify the, the green ones. So they use our own people. But uh, any other questions, please? Please do not forget there was a church on the top of the hill that that is very important also. But the, the floor that leads to the last chamber is very slow. You take your time, you walk slow. This is one of the, the map of the walls we did see in the first chamber. Yeah. But this one was sealed off. That was sealed off. Please come. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, please come closer, a little bit closer. So he's the, the priest, he's a traditional priest. Mm -hmm. And he's in charge of one of the, the shrines. The sh a shrine is an altar. And he said he welcomes you all back home. Mm. <laughs> Okay, um, he said he welcomes you back home and he's going to pour libation. He's going to pray. You know, mm. We call that libation. And I'm going to let him do that. Yes, okay. And after that, I'm going to explain to you what he's said. Okay. This libation. You call this libation. Yeah, you can take pictures. So, place is basically the traditional way of welcoming back our brothers and sisters. For, yeah, and as a priest, he's the only one who qualifies to do that. You know, to welcome all our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean, from the U.S., and from Europe back home. And what it just did, in the African traditional spirituality, you know, there's a difference between spirituality and religion. Yeah. Every religion has a dogma. Yes. In spirituality, there's no specific leader. In the Christian religion, the leader or the master leader is Jesus Christ. The Muslims have uh, uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. But in the African traditional spirituality, because it is not a religion, there's no leader you can look up to. There's no leader. Right. Everybody has a, a, an ancestral spirit that leads them. Now, before you pray in the African traditional religion or spirituality, you have to pour a libation. 
libation is to seek permission from the ancestral spirits before you can pray. So that is what he's, he's already done. And when you move inside there, I'm going to let him pray for all of you and welcome you back traditionally into the motherland. Do you have any questions before you move? What tribe is he from? He's Fanti. He's Fanti. The natives in Cape Coast are called Fantis. And those in Accra are called Ga. Those in the Volta region are Airways. Yes. Uh, any specific yes, questions? Nah, I'm going to be saying, 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 I'm going to be Okay, my wonderful brothers and sisters, I officially welcome you all back to the altar. In Cape Coast, there are, there are 77 shrines like this. Uh, this shrine, this specific one, is called Nana Tabar. He is the traditional priest. His name is Nana Wami Nkra. However, this altar was not here at the time of the transatlantic slave trade. The altar was established here after the abolishment. Uh, you see, there's a small cell there. Now, that cell is where all the African men who got very sick in a male dungeon were led to die. They just dumped them there until they died. And after they died, they trashed them somewhere, either in the ocean or somewhere else. Europeans made a decision to treat Africans like that. Now, don't let anyone tell you otherwise that they thought Africans were animals. They knew. Because the same people here were still sexually abusing the African woman in the female branches. So they knew perfectly we were human beings like that. But they made a decision to treat Africans like that. Now, when this wasn't here, there used to be a very big tunnel, a very huge tunnel right here. The tunnel is 66 meters. Now, the English colonizers in the slave castle were so much afraid of the African men. So they never allowed them to walk through where they came from. They chained all of them in the middle and shackled them. One of the reasons why the English colonizers chained the African men on their necks was to prevent them from communicating. And when there's no communication, there's no unity. And when there's an absence of unity, it's nearly impossible to fight as one people. After that, they'll force them through the tunnel to the door we call the door of no return. And the moment our ancestors walk through that door, Something happened. There was a beginning of a journey and an end of an experience. Their heritage, culture, identity, relatives, families, everything was taken away from them. And these things, money can buy. Money can buy them. The only way to regain them is through self education. Self education takes a lot of sacrifices. Um, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to let him pour my vision again and pray before we proceed, please.
And this clay can be found on the ground, and the, it's a white clay. They use it to mark him, to signify a purification. It also signifies uh, 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 winning or being victory over something. Even in some areas, when you come out as a, there's something called puberty rites. So when you come out of the those rights, at the end of it, you need to receive that sort of blessings or that sort of mark for people to know that you have gone through this and now you are victorious. I hope I hope that uh, uh, so I just want to explain this for you to understand before you go through them. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm not going to be able to get a pain. So right now, um, you have been blessed. So at least you should give some donation or, you know, to also say thank you for blessing me. Exactly. So you can just come. Yeah. Just, just go ahead. Yeah. And then we're going to return from the, the dungeons up to the courtyard family. Use your right, don't use your left when you're, when you're giving. Wait, literally, on the ground. Just yes, use your right. Don't use your left to give it, just use your right. Oh, use your right? Okay. Yeah, when you're giving it out, just use your right. Right, so family, we're going to head back yeah. Yeah. to the chambers on the way up. Are you ready to lead us out? Underground at the male African Holocaust dungeons in Cape Coast, so called castle, or we call African Holocaust. So we just walked to all five chambers below. And as you can see, the path. Take your time and walk up. You can, you can use the wall to brace yourself. And 
sense of family, what you're looking at this is slippery, especially if it's raining or just slippery in general based on the shoes that you have. There you go, take your time, family. And here we go, family. Brightness. And this is the top part of where we are. We were underground. Like, we're literally underground here. And when we talk about church, this is the church building. And at the top is where the white devils enjoy life in paradise. And below are people in dungeons as stolen and enslaved Africans. Ready to be sent off on a journey of no return. And here we are, family, returning strong. So, family, these are the highlights. Thank you, guys. It is the thank you of our reconnection journey to the African Holocaust. And as you can see, okay, this way, please. We'll make it to where we can really accommodate everyone for a complete reconnection. And stay tuned okay. as we give you more accordance for the from the other dungeons and other aspects of this Cape Coast African Holocaust dungeons.